Time for Click to get up and go. And this time, we're heading towards the top of the world. And almost 67 degrees north and just nudging the Arctic Circle, Iceland is home to 320,000 people, all living on top of a plume of superheated rock in the middle of the Atlantic. The volcanic activity that formed the island 50 million years ago still churns away today, continually changing a landscape that is both otherworldly and completely spectacular. The sat-navs here know that too. In fact, if you're not in a hurry, they can be programmed to take you out of your way and take in some of the island's wonders. You choose from one of a number of different driving tours, and as the sat-nav guides you around Iceland, it will tell you about the various points of interest that you pass on the way. The area we're driving through is called Thrastarskogur Woods. Also coming up is one of Iceland's richest salmon rivers, the river Sog, which flows out of Lake Thingvatlavatn. The country's economy has also had a bit of a rocky ride of late. After its banking industry famously went south, it now relies on tourism more than ever before. But while the visitors enjoy one natural resource, the locals are taking full advantage of another. Iceland has, to all intents and purposes, an unlimited supply of heat. Water that seeps just a short distance down into the crust bursts back to the surface as superheated steam and mud. The first benefit for Icelanders is free central heating. The naturally warmed water is stored in these suitably futuristic looking tanks overlooking the capital, Reykjavik. And it also means extremely cheap and environmentally friendly power. The high-pressure steam is used to turn turbines at geothermal power stations hiding away in the sulphurous mists. In fact, the country is looking towards becoming the first to run completely on renewable energy. And it's got so much of the stuff, it's now inviting technology companies to relocate here to have some of it. Behind most large companies in the world these days are these things, computer servers. They're used to store all of the data and do all of the number crunching. In fact, if you do any cloud computing, your emails and your documents will be stored in data centers like this. Now, these things take an enormous amount of power to keep them running. But interestingly, they use about as much power again just to keep the things cool. In fact, that's what's making most of the noise in here. It's the fans inside these units blowing air over all the kits. Well, not only does Iceland have all of this electricity going spare, it also has something else in plentiful supply too. Cold air. While the heat below ground provides that cheap power, the cool conditions above ground remove the need for power-hungry chillers. Not that Iceland is alone in offering a cool place to house your data. Globally, data centres are moving north to chillier climes. But recently, Facebook chose to build its first European data centre, not in Iceland, but in Sweden. I asked Fern Global's boss if Iceland might struggle to lure all that sensitive and precious data into the country. What with all those active volcanoes just up the road? In Iceland, our site is located to the west, um, and the volcanoes happen to be to the east. So these wonderful volcanoes that produce this geothermal energy, uh, if there was to be an eruption, the prevailing winds carry any of that ash to the east. Data centers are among the fastest growing consumers of energy, and reducing that consumption is moving higher and higher up the environmental agenda.